Hello guys, so welcome sa aking electronics lecture series. Okay, ang objectives ng lecture series ko na to ay unang-una sa ECE students. So sa mga wala pang electronic subjects, pwede itong maging advanced study. Para naman sa mga ECE students na currently naka-enroll ng mga electronic subjects, pwede itong maging reference or reviewer. And then para naman sa non-ECE students, Pwede junior high school, senior high school, or college student na merong electronic subjects, pwede rin itong maging reference and reviewer. Okay, so simulan na natin. For this episode, episode 3, we will discuss the diode. A diode is a semiconductor device that essentially acts as a one-way switch for current. It allows current to flow easily in one direction, but severely restricts current from flowing in the opposite direction. Okay, so again, ang main application ng diode ay maging switch. So it can be switch on, or yung close switch, it can be switch off, or yung tinatag na open switch. And then, this diode consists of two layers of semiconductor. So, ito yung isang layer, yung P-layer or yung P-type material. Then, ito yung another layer, ito yung N-layer or N-type material. Then, ito naman yung schematic diagram ng diode. So, ito yung terminal niya, positive terminal, which is the anode. And this is the negative terminal, which is the cathode. Then, ang physical appearance niya, ito yung nasa baba ng schematic diagram. Naka-cylindrical in shape yan, and then may silver stripe sa isang side. Para ma-designate, okay, or malagyan ng mark yung cathode terminal. Let us now discuss the temperature effect in the diode. At very instant, okay, yung creation ng P-region, in N region. So, meron silang tinatawag na PN junction. So, yung PN junction, very narrow yan. So, parang guhit lang dito sa drawing natin. Okay? And then, ang P region natin, naglalaman niya ng mga carriers. Majority ng carriers sa P region, holes. Yan. Represented by the white circles in the P region. Then, sa N region naman, Naglalaman niya ng majority carrier na electrons. Ito, represented by the red circles with negative. At room temperature, pag itong uh, PN device natin na expose sa room temperature, which is 25 degrees Celsius, yan ang i-consider nating room temperature dito, magkakaroon ng tinatawag na depletion region. Okay? So, itong depletion region, Dahil nga sa manipis yung PN junction, so nagkakaroon ng attraction between holes and electrons dito sa magkabilang region. Okay, so parang yung electrons dito sa N region, ma-attract yan papuntang P region. And mag iwan yan ng mga holes. Kaya dito sa diagram na nandito, yung may depletion region, kung makikita nyo yung left side ng depletion region, layers of negative charges. And then, yung right side naman ng depletion region, layer of positive charges. And since meron niyang negative and positive, uh, negative and positive charges, nakikreate ngayon niya ng barrier potential. So, yung barrier, ibig sabihin, uh, mapipigilan niya na yung further attraction of the charges. So, wala nang ma-attract na electrons from N region papuntang P region. And then, potential, since uh, merong voltage na nag exist dito sa depletion region. Okay? So, at 25 degrees Celsius, ito yung mga barrier potential with respect to semiconductor materials. Okay? For germanium, 0.3 volt yung barrier potential na yan. For silicon, 0.7 volt. And then, for gallium arsenide, 1.2 volt. So, lahat ng voltage na yan, 
ang reference temperature 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, so since may barrier na between P and N region, wala nang makakatawid na electrons from N region papuntang P region. So kung walang makakatawid na electrons, wala tayong tinatawag na flow of electrons, wala din tayong electric current. Okay? So para magkaroon ng additional energy itong mga electrons para makatawid across the barrier potential or across the depletion region, kailangan natin ang tinatawag na biasing. So, biasing, it refers to the use of a DC voltage to establish certain operating conditions for an electronic device. Okay? So, as illustrated here, meron tayong DC voltage in the form of battery and then connected in this way so para mabigyan natin ng extra energy, extra force yung mga electrons para ma-overcome yung depletion region. And then, pag na-overcome ang depletion region, so, yung mga electrons makakatawid papuntang uh, P region. So, from N region papuntang N region. So, kapag nagkaroon ng flow of electrons, meron na tayong electric current. Meron tayong two types of biasing. Ito yung forward and reverse biasing. So, sa forward biasing, yung supply natin, tatawagin natin V bias, yung positive terminal niya, connected sa P region. And yung negative terminal ng V bias, connected sa N region. With this type of biasing, nagkakaroon ng extra energy yung mga electrons dito sa N region, and na-overcome nila yung barrier. So therefore, this type of biasing, yung forward biasing, it allows the flow of electrons or yung electric current. So, pwede rin natin i-consider ang forward bias diode na close switch. So, kapag close switch, meron tayong uh, path for the electron flow. And, dito rin mapapansin natin kapag forward bias, yung depletion region natin manipis lang. So, ito yung tinatawag na narrow depletion region. Para naman sa reverse bias, okay? So ang V bias natin negative terminal connected sa P region. And then yung positive terminal connected sa N region. So with this biasing condition, ito yung biasing condition na do not allow the flow of current. So kung makikita nyo dito sa illustration sa baba, uh, walang flow of electrons. Although may mga minimal electron flow, so napakakaunti lang yan. Almost zero yung value ng electron flow na nakikita natin dito sa drawing below the reverse bias circuit or reverse bias condition. Okay? So, itong mga minimal electron flow na to, ito yung tinatawag nating reverse current or leakage current. Mapapansin din natin sa depletion region, kumapal. Mas makapal siya kumpara sa forward condition. So, ito yung tinatawag nating wide depletion region. Okay? So, again, ha, sa forward bias condition, ang depletion region natin narrow. Sa reverse bias condition, ang depletion region ng diode, wide. So, sa forward bias condition, uh, it allows the flow of electrons. While sa reverse bias condition, it blocks the flow of electrons, pero may mga nakakalusot na minimal amount of electrons na tinatawag nating leakage current or reverse current. Okay, so aside from meron tayong narrow and wide depletion region, so, itong narrow depletion region, kinukonsider din to na with very low resistance. Or yung ohmic value niya, very low. So, kapag very low ang resistance, uh, mababa yung magre-resist ng flow of current. So, therefore, makakadalo yung 
electrons, makakaproduce ng electric current. While for reverse bias condition with wide depletion region, this is a depletion region with very high resistance or ohmic value. So kapag high ang magre-resist, may iwasan or mabablock yung flow of electrons. So meaning, walang electric current kapag reverse bias condition with wide depletion region or with very high resistance. Okay, so again, uh, reverse current is also known as leakage current. So, this is due to thermally produced carrier. So, when we say thermally produced carrier, because of the uh, surrounding temperature, kaya nagkakaroon tayo ng mga uh, small amount of electron flow during reverse current. So, kung pag-uusapan natin yung mga semiconductor materials, for germanium diode, the reverse current is around 1 micro amperes. For silicon diode, the reverse current is around 10 pico amperes. And for gallium arsenide, the reverse current is around 1 pico amperes. Okay, let us now move to diode model. So, pag pinag-uusapan ng diode model, yung diode symbol natin, yung schematic symbol natin, binibigyan niya ng equivalent circuit. Okay? So, meron tayong three models. Meron tayong ideal. Okay? The first model. Ito yung pinaka-simple. Ito yung pinaka-basic. Then, meron tayong second model. Ito yung practical or simplified model. And then, yung third model natin, ito yung complete or piecewise linear model. So, yung ideal model, uh, ito yung ginagamit para lang malaman kung nagkakandak or not yung isang diode. Yung practical model naman or simplified model, ginagamit to for simple calculation. Okay, para malaman natin yung electric current or yung mga voltage drop sa circuit. Kapag complete or piecewise linear model, Ito na yung ginagamit kapag uh, mas complex yung design, mas detalyado yung circuit. Diode IV curve. So, yung IV curve, ito yung current and voltage curve ng mga uh, models ng diode. Para sa ideal, okay, so ito yung IV curve. Yung y-axis natin, para yan sa diode current. And then yung x-axis natin, para yan sa diode voltage. So, sa first quadrant, ito yung forward region. And then, yung third quadrant, ito naman yung reverse bias condition or reverse bias region. So, unay natin sa reverse bias. So, habang naka-reverse bias ang diode, so, kung ano man yung voltage supply, in this case, negative supply, so, dyan, magiging reverse bias ang diode, ang current sa diode, zero. Okay? And then, pag na-reach pa yung tinatawag na reverse voltage or breakdown voltage, so, mag increase drastically yung current. Ito yung tinatawag na breakdown. So, ang breakdown, ito yung possible damage may occur in the diode. And then, sa reverse or sa forward bias region naman, so, kapag naka-forward bias na yung diode, kung ano man yung supply voltage, uh, magkakaroon ng zero voltage drop yung diode, pero equivalent yun sa close switch, katulad na pinakita natin sa previous slide. And then kapag close switch, so possible uh, increase in the diode current or flow of electrons is possible now in the circuit. So mayroon na yung current. Kaya dito sa graph, Ito yung zero voltage across the diode, pero yung current, maximum. Okay? Can reach the maximum value. And then, para naman sa practical, ito yung practical IV curve. So, 
during reverse bias condition dito sa reverse region ganun pa rin habang reverse bias ang diode okay from negative voltage to uh, a voltage below 0.7 pwede natin i-consider na ganun so reverse bias condition and kapag reverse bias zero ang ID meron din yang breakdown so, pag na-reach itong reverse bias na makakapag-breakdown. Okay. So, mag increase yung current drastically in the negative uh, direction. So, ito ay tinatawag na breakdown. Again, ang breakdown, possible damage may occur. Then, sa forward region, so forward bias region, pag na-reach na yung uh, forward bias voltage, doon sa diode, mag stay sa 0.7 yung diode voltage trap while the current is increasing or uh, na-reach niya yung tinatawag nating maximum ID. So again, ha? so this is equivalent to a closed switch and 0.7 battery. Okay? Then, sa complete model, So, again, ang ating reverse bias condition correspond to a current of almost zero. So, may mga portion na zero ang current, pero may mga portion dito sa reverse bias region na merong small amount of current. At again, pag na-reach yung reverse voltage or reverse breakdown voltage, so, marireach natin yung breakdown region. So, ito yung possible damage. Sa forward bias naman, forward bias region, okay, so, habang lumalapit doon sa 0.7 mark, okay, by the way, itong 0.7, ito yung tinatawag na forward voltage ng diode. So, habang lumalapit doon sa 0.7 mark, nagkakaroon ng small increase yung current. Okay, from this point up to this point, nagkaroon ng small increase. Now, pag na-reach na yung tinatawag na forward voltage, magkakaroon ng, anong tawag natin dito, exponential increase in the current. Okay, tataas ng tataas yung current exponentially. So, ibig sabihin, uh, na-reach niya na yung tinatawag na knee point. Ito, tinatawag din yan knee point, kaya nga minsan ang pangalan dyan ay VK or the knee voltage. Okay, so this is during forward bias condition wherein ang um, diode natin equivalent sa close switch, battery 0.7 and small internal resistance. This IB curve of ideal model can be represented by diode shockless equation. So for the shockless equation, this is ID, so ito yung diode current equals IS, yung IS, ito yung uh, reverse current, times the quantity, E raised to VD over N, VT, minus 1. Okay? So, again, list down natin yung mga parameters. ID is diode current. Okay? IS this is the reverse current. And then VD. Uh, this is the biasing voltage. Then N. Ito yung tinatawag na ideality factor of the semiconductor. So, pwedeng 1. Pwedeng 2. So, kapag hindi binigay, assume 1. And then, Vt is the thermal voltage. Okay? Then, meron naman tayong separate equation para sa thermal voltage. This is equivalent to K times Tk over Q. So, yung K dito, ito yung Boltzmann's constant. Okay? 
And then the equivalent of this k is 1.38 times 10 raised to negative 23 joules per Kelvin. So yung temperature naman, okay, this is in Kelvin. And then yung Q natin, this is charge of electrons. So this is 1.6 times 10 negative 19 Coulomb. Okay, so sample problem tayo. At a temperature of 27 degrees Celsius, this is the common temperature for components in and closed operating system. Okay, determine the thermal voltage. So from this equation, substitution tayo, this is 1.38 times 10 negative 23 joules per Kelvin multiplied by temperature in Kelvin, so binigyan tayo ng 27 degrees Celsius para maging Kelvin plus 273. So this is now in Kelvin. Okay, so hindi na to Celsius. Divided by Q. So this is magnitude lang to ha. Uh, electron charge. 1.6 times 10 negative 19 Coulomb. So consistent naman tayo sa tinatawag nating units. Therefore yung answer natin dyan already in voltage. Okay? So compute natin yan. 1.38 times 10 negative 23 Okay, times 27 plus 273 over 1.6 times 10 raised to negative 19 and this is equivalent to 25.875 times 10 negative 3 okay, in terms of volts or ito yung approximately gawin na nating 26 and then times 10 negative 3 is milli and volts. So, this is the thermal voltage for this example. Then, meron din tayong tinatag na diode DC resistance. So, the higher the current through the diode, the lower is the DC resistance. The typical value of this DC resistance is 10 to 80 ohms. So, from this graph, uh, you can solve the DC resistance Okay, so we represent this DC resistance as capital R D. And this is simply from this graph. Okay, kuha ka ng isang point dyan and identify mo yung BD tsaka ID. So gamit lang tayo rito ng Ohm's Law. Meron din tayong diode AC resistance. This is also called dynamic resistance represented by R prime D which is equivalent to 26 millivolts over ID. So example, calculate the diode AC resistance at ID equals 2 milliamperes. Okay? So solution natin dyan, R prime D equals 26 millivolts over 2 milliamperes. And this is 13 ohms. Okay, so another example. Solve the diode current using ideal model. So in this circuit, meron tayong series connection. So the supply is 10 volts. Okay, meron tayong dalawang resistors dito. So lagyan natin ng value or label. This is R1 and this is R2. Okay, meron tayong diode pero i-consider natin na ideal model. So, pinapahanap dito yung diode current. Okay? So, assuming ito yung diode current flow natin. And then, this is a series connection. So, meron tayong flow ng total current. Okay? So, solution natin dito na lang. Okay, since this is a series connection, so yung total current natin, ito na rin yung hinahanap nating diode current. Okay, so using Ohm's law, 
this is uh, voltage over resistance okay the total voltage over the total resistance o kaya pwede natin gamitan niya ng Kirchhoff's voltage law pwede rin yan okay so from Kirchhoff's voltage law magsimula tayo sa 10 volts this is 10 volts and then minus the total current of IT then dalawa yung dadaanan niyang resistances yung R1 4 kilo ohms plus 6 kilo ohms okay and then since ideal model to the voltage drop across the diode is 0 so this is now equal to 0 then solving for IT this is equivalent to 10 volts over okay, 10 kilo ohms. So, this is 1 milli amperes. Therefore, yung inahanap nating ID, this is also equivalent to 1 milli amperes. Okay, so this time naman, isolve natin yung ID using practical model. And take note, yung D1, silicon diode yan. Okay? So again, ang Kirchhoff's voltage law natin, yan, dito sa loop na to. So this is I total. Okay, gamit na tayo ng uh, KBL. So, I start tayo sa 10 volts, minus I total, and then times the resistances in series, 4K plus 6K, and then minus the voltage drop of diode, this is silicon, so 0 0.7 equals 0. So, 10 tsaka 0.7, this is 9.3 volts, minus total current times 10 kilo ohms equals 0. Solving for IT, total current here, so magiging 9.3 over 10 kilo ohms. And this is 0 0.93 milliamperes. Okay, so since ang diode naka-series naman, Therefore, ID is also equivalent to 0.93 milliamperes. Okay? So, this is for practical model. Okay, so try naman natin ang complete model. So, solve ID using complete model. Still, diode 1 is silicon. Assume R prime D, 10 ohms. So, again, dito yung loop natin. Para sa KBL natin, total current loop. Okay, this is our solution. Gamit tayo ng KBL. So, start tayo sa 10 volts. And then, minus the total current. So, lahat ng resistance na madaanan niya in series. So, meron tayong 4 kilo ohms. Meron tayong 6 kilo ohms. And, i-consider na rin natin yung R prime D. So, this is 10 ohms. Okay. And then, the voltage drop across diode 1, which is silicon, 0.7. And then, equal to 0. So, 10 minus 0.7, meron tayong 9.3 volt. And then, total current, so this is 10,000 plus 10 ohms. So, meron tayong 10, 0, 10 ohms equals 0. So, ang I1 natin, or this is I total. Ang I total natin, this is 9.3 over 10,000 10 ohms. So, ilan yan? Okay, 9.3 divided by 10,000 10 ohms. So, this is almost the same with the practical model. So, dagdagan na lang natin ng uh, significant figures. So, this is 0.9291 milliamperes. 
So, since again, nakasiris naman yung diode. So, ito na rin yung total current. So, 0.9291. So, diode current is also 0.9291. Okay, so this is the end of episode 3, the diode. Nakatapos na naman kayo ng panibagong episode. So, up next video natin, episode 4, which is about diode in DC circuit. So, ito na yung series parallel or series parallel combination. Again, thank you sa pagpakinig, pag-aaral sa video lecture na to. And kung may natutunan kayo at uh, tingin nyo, magagamit nyo yung video lecture natin. So, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Again, thank you guys.